this Christmas I don't want to see my mama cry If you want to send a text, 35192 is the way to do that. You can watch us at alancockshow.com if you like. I didn't check to see who was helping out on our last live show back there in the video department. Fig E. Pudding (laughs) is helping out. I believe that's Figius Elmer Pudding is uh, back there. Nailed it. Thank you so much. Uh, Your efforts have not gone unnoticed. If you listen to the show on iHeartRadio, by the way. There was a, like you said, there was a lot of people submitting and wanting to help out today. Yeah, angling uh, for. Uh, yeah. Yule Log. Yule Log, yeah, sure. Hlog. It was Hlog. H- H-L-O-G. H-L-O-G. Oh, Hlog. Yule. Yule. Yeah. Hlog. <clears throat> gotcha. And uh, he, he almost made it, but uh, maybe next He was bested it. by Fig mm-hmm. E. Pudding. Mm-hmm. If you listen out of state, tell me where. You can always leave us messages, too. I heard from Kenny, who listens out in Fremont, Indiana. He left a very nice message. Uh, Brian is one of our bureau chiefs in Memphis. Jonah listens in Austin, Texas. Andy is in Monroe, North Carolina. <laughs> well, you're not going to play the nice message? No, no. You know what? Because some people, they don't realize that they, I think they set the phone down while they're at work. Oh, really? It's very <laughs> noisy. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. I could hear it in my headphones, but the audience would never hear it. Okay. But he's like, hey, I've been listening for a long time. I live in Fremont, Indiana, and um, uh, happy holidays to you guys and blah, blah, blah. That kind of stuff. Uh, Travis uh, uh, listens in Wixom, Michigan. That is far northwest suburbs of Detroit. We were just out that way, actually, because my older daughter had her had her holiday concert at the School of Music there at Michigan State. And so uh, we went. And then that night, because my uh, father-in-law lives in Fenton, Michigan, not that far. So we were going to spend the night there so the little one could see uh, Grandma and Grandpa. And then on the way back, Gwen's had it in her head for a while. She really wanted to go to Fuddruckers. Okay. And oh. Fuddruckers really isn't a thing anymore. There, there, aren't, Toledo. there aren't any around here. I think there used to be, you know, but back in the day, Fuddruckers was pretty pervasive. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. It was everywhere. Everywhere. And for people who'd never been, it's like, you put your hamburger together. They had a huge toppings bar, mm-hmm. and you just get your hamburger and then do what you want to do with it. But they really fell by the wayside, and so when we Googled it, there were two in the Detroit suburbs, and so I said, well, we'll weave our way through coming before coming back to Cleveland. And so we get there, and it's in the corner spot of a strip mall. Oh, yeah. And it's been pared down. We literally walked in. There were a couple of people there, and we walked over to where all of, like, your toppings bar would be. <laughs> and we were like, we just look at each other, and Gwen's like, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. She was crestfallen. Mm. Because we hadn't been to a Fuddruckers in a long, long time. And so as I'm leaving, I'm like, well, that's why it's barely a thing anymore, yeah. because they've pared it down so much. Say it again, the name of the restaurant. Fuddruckers. Are you saying fudge ruckers? Fuddruckers. F- F-U-D-D ruckers. Yeah. Fuddruckers. It sounds like you're saying fudge. Fuddruckers. Fuddruckers. Mm-hmm. Fuddruckers. 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 Yes. Fuddruckers. Yes. Don't drag the j. There is no j. Exactly. I know. The Fuddruckers. That's where I was Fuddruckers. surprised. Fuddruckers. No. Fuddruckers. Drucker. <laughs> you can say fa druckers or fuddruckers. I think, yeah. I'm I saying think... fa druckers. Yes. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah. kind of sounds like you're saying fudge. Ruckers. Ruckers. Well, I was just there, and I know there's no fudge in the word, so we might have stayed had there been fudge ruckers. Fud ruckers. Anyway, uh, very, very exciting, and um, what are you going to do? After so, the, go ahead. Do you know if that one is still in Toledo? I don't know. I hadn't Because I didn't think there were any college. left in Ohio. I mean, I went to a Fud Ruckers in college. I once. think you're thinking of Fudge Ruckers, which oh, is the it's hot. It's where you put fu- yes. lettuce, tomato, onion on your fudge. Y- that too. Whoa. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking of an ice cream joint, but oh, uh, yeah. yeah there, there were so many Fud Ruckers around. There was one not far from our house in Medina, and we go there all the time. Uh, like all the restaurants that we went to on a regular basis are gone. Like uh-huh. first Ponderosa. Pretty much I gone. Love Ponderosa. Oh, Damon's. God, I love that. We go Damon's. Damon's, like, Damon's was our special Berea. occasion place. And I got my, food poisoning from Damon's one time and uh, never went back. My dad ended up building a bunch of Damon's. Like we worked on a bunch of them. The one that is like the wasabi now mm-hmm. in uh, Independence. 
Oh, that used yeah. to be a. Oh, that's right. Damon's. Yeah, that's right. That was a Damon's. I worked on that. I helped build that thing. Wow. And Did you ever walk a, into Wasabi and go, you know, I built this place? No. Oh. Never. Mm. But there were so many Damons. They expanded s- so big, and then they just went away. And I loved Damons. And then Fuddruckers was another one that was just everywhere. And then overnight just seemed to go away. I mean, when I first moved to Northeast Ohio, I think there was a Fud Druckers <laughs> in, like, Cuyahoga <laughs> Falls or something way down there. Literally, on this map, the two suburban Detroit locations look like the only ones in the entire Midwest. I don't know if that's true, but um, anywho, that's my amazing Fud Druckers story. It just, it just, when, he, when I was reading Wixom, Michigan, it kind of just jogged my memory there. After the show um, Tuesday night in Appleton, Wisconsin, which is not a large town. Nope. uh, We were hungry, Mm -hmm. and the comedy club served pretzel bites or nacho chips and cheese. Those are your two options. They're trying to get you to drink. (laughs) That is it. That is the only food that they had. So we were like, hey... It's it. The show was at seven thirty, so it was nine o'clock, nine thirty at night. And we're like, where can we go to get some food? This guy was like, oh, pretty much all of your options are like bar and grill type places. We're like, that's fine. There was one walking distance from the club. This I would have never described as a bar and grill. This was a dive bar that had a flat top and one fryer. That's what this right. place was. <laughs> so we walked in, and there was one bartender working. The place was packed. Then we walked up, and I was like, are you are you guys still serving food? And he was like annoyed that I even asked. He's like, oh, yeah, and, like, handed me these dirty <laughs> paper, like, menus that were real skinny. They had, like, fried cheese curds and onion rings yeah. and mozzarella sticks. So they had all your regular bar food, and then they had, on the other side, was burgers. And so, like, we ordered a couple of burgers, and I asked the guy, which I, sh- I knew the question before I asked, because they had popcorn shrimp on the menu. I looked over, and I was like, I think I only see one fryer. And I was like, hey— I'm allergic to shrimp. Does everything get fried in the same oil? And he goes, everything's cross-contaminated. Like, that. he just yeah. said it like... He's not here for your bull shrimp, <laughs> right. popcorn or otherwise. He was like, just don't eat here, was essentially the vibe I was getting from Whoa. him. So it was just like, okay. He goes, we got bags of chips. Like, I, he was so mad that we were inquiring about food because yeah. he was like, I'm the only one here. I got to cook. I got to do this. And he's like, so give me a little time. It took like 40 minutes for us to get these little flat top burgers. They were fine. And you know he was going to take his oh, time, he too. he served every single person at the bar another round of drinks, yep. came out, cleared off a couple tables, and then started he's just He's just food. nuking hamburger patties back there. Well, he no, could have done that. Well, was a flat top, so he put them on. Oh, you like, saw him do it. Yeah, but, uh, but that was our big... Uh, There's not any good food in Appleton, Wisconsin. I won't say all of Wisconsin, but definitely not. Like, everything is burgers and fried foods. We couldn't find a single option. Or dairy, which not necessarily your area of expertise. At 9 o'clock in Appleton, everything's shut down. And that's what they were saying. They're like, Like, there's nothing You have to go to dinner at 5 o'clock if you want to get anything. The place that they sent us for a healthy food option was called Cheddar's. Yeah. And oh yeah, I know Cheddar's. <laughs> it's just it's just Applebee's, but yeah. with fewer options. We there had those in Illinois. One salad on yeah. the menu. <laughs> Everything else was like chicken quesadilla cheeseburger, and I was like, I just want a yeah. vegetable. You know, we have a new take on Applebee's. Right. Oh, you do. For people telling me there's a Fud Ruckers in Bowling Green, there not anymore. There are no Fud Ruckers in Ohio at all. The the there are about look like there's about a hundred of them nationwide. The bulk of them are in Texas. But there isn't one left in Ohio. So you're going to have to travel. It's one at the Fox Woods Casino. Jeez. Have you been to Madison yet? Not yet. Okay. Madison has a great, it's a much different scene. It's, it's a college, college town. town. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they still do fried cheese very well. And yeah. there's a place called the Old Fashioned. And they have the best fried cheese curds that I've ever had. And they have all these like great sauces that go with them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's also a city where they're putting macaroni on pizza. Oh, like, I it mean, was just everything a mess. is just like that. In and it Wisconsin. was so funny because <laughs> they, they love their cheese. Mess. They love, they love it. their cheese and they love their beer. Me and Joe were sitting there, the other comic, and he looks at me and he goes, "How is everyone not five hundred pounds?" Because like a lot of them are. Well, I yeah. said, and it's so funny because I was like, "Some people are," and then we both just silently started to look around the restaurant, like <laughs> trying to eye fat mm-hmm. people. <laughs> like, where are they hiding? He's, like, you know, everyone's not fit. But there wasn't, like, morbidly obese people walking around. But I was like, I don't know, man. Maybe they, they eat fill up on too. beer. They, can, they, they, they can also grocery shop. That it could be Well, option. I also think there might be a thing in a place like Wisconsin where when they go out, that's what they're going to eat. But there's probably a lot of people that don't go out that often. 
Yeah. So they're probably only eating like that when they're going out. Well, I guess I was, I guess it's all dairy farms. I was a little yeah. confused because I'm like, there's so many farms in Wisconsin. You think that farm to table would be a bigger deal. But I guess that's just for cheese. Yeah, they're not, not doing like spinach. Kale. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, yeah, it's usually cows, a little cheese. bit more uh, organic uh, menu. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, hey, by the way, because I used to live in Tremont, I wanted to give a shout out very quickly to um, Roosevelt Post 58 is closing. And if you've ever lived in Tremont, even if you weren't a veteran, this was for Polish American vets right there in Tremont, kind of kitty corner from um, the treehouse, I think. And been there since the 20s. But like so many places that give neighborhoods their original flavor, it's been sold and it'll probably get turned into condos or get turned into a coffee shop or something else. So if you ever saw, because even if you weren't a member, you could walk by just about any time of year outside Roosevelt Post 58 there and you'd see some interesting characters hanging about. The guy who owns the place uh, confirmed that it's been sold and it's going to get turned into something else. So they'll do a big blowout on Saturday. If you're a Tremont resident or you've ever uh, been over there, they said that their members just don't live in Tremont anymore. A lot of people get priced out of neighborhoods like that. And so uh, the new ownership, I guess, is going to be the people who own the Happy Dog. I don't know if maybe they'll turn it. That would seem really close to the existing Happy Dog there in yeah, but they're Square different they clientele. Do. I think they could probably make that work because a lot of people hang out in Tremont and they don't leave Tremont. Uh, and a lot of people that hang out in Ohio City, Ohio City or uh, Gordon Square, they don't really go that way. All right. So they could. They, well, that I leaves think two, um, two happy dogs could exist within that close of a range. To that each leaves other. Uh, Post Thirteen in the Slavic Village is still open over there on Fleet Avenue for the Polish American vets. But obviously, you know, uh, people die off and people, but you will, no matter where you live, you will rarely have a better time than if you can finagle your way into a uh, VFW hall. You go down in the basement, you hang with the vets. Uh, if you find one that's talkative, they've got some stories that will blow your mind. Alan Cox Show After Hours line, want to leave us messages there, you can do it. It's a 216 216- 986-8903. Hey, guys. Jackson Mackin here. Uh, I was listening to today's show earlier. Uh, Bill was talking about the uh, train set his grandmother, grandma got him for Christmas. Uh, he might be a model train guy. I say go for it, Bill. Um, I have a couple of sets that I like to put together when I get a house. The apartment where we're at right now, there's no space for it. When we get a house, I like to really expand my collection and, and do something like that, make a town and what have you with uh, the scale model, cars and trains and stuff. So I'm fully on board with that, Bill. I think you should do that. It's really fun. And you can just uh, kind of make, you know, whatever you want. So I'm, I'm fully support you on that, Bill. Oh, hey, Alan, can you hit the post on uh, Night and Day by Al B. Shore? I hate so much. <laughs> Night and Day by Al B. God, remember Al B. Shore? Night no. and Day. This is his first big hit. He had a radio show for a while, but he's from, he's Al B. Shore. This would have been like, Pound Cake, you know Al B. Shore? I've heard of him. Been I'm like not... late 80s, early 90s, like before your time, but uh, you know, if it. Um... It's an R&B. Yeah. Al B. Shore. No, I I, I don't, I, I know the song, uh, Dex, but I can't hit the post on it. I'm sorry. Why does he have a unibrow? It is a banger, though. What's that? Why does he have a unibrow? Who, Al B. Shore? Yeah, was that his thing? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I know this. Yeah, you know Night and Day. Yeah. It was his first big hit. I'll be sure it just came out of a coma, by the way. He was in a coma for two months. It's pretty wild. He uh, And he got real fat, too. You remember Luther Vandross back in the day because he was, um, I think he was seeking solace in the refrigerator because he couldn't tell people that he was gay, at least for a long, long time. And Al B. Shore, was, uh, he's not gay, I don't think, but I mean, he was another one of those guys that got really fat. He was like 315 pounds. And then he got the lap band, and he started to look really good. You think if you were an R&B singer, I think a lot of those guys took their cues from Barry White. And they were like, wow, if that guy can get laid, 
then what am I busting my ass? You know, because you got your Keith Sweats and you had those guys in the R&B world who were like really trying to keep it right and tight. But I think some of the other guys were like, who cares if I'm fat? Still going to get laid. If B.B. King had, you know, how many kids does that guy have? Al B. Shore was in a two-month coma. But he's out of it now and he's doing okay. I don't know what put him in the coma. But uh, this is a pretty good song. So, uh, Dex, long story short, I can't hit the I can't hit the uh, post on this because I haven't heard it in 20 years. But if Brian's smart, this is how he'll welcome you home as playing night and day as you walk in. Mm. I don't think so. No? He's not big on R&B. Really? It's his least favorite type of music. R&B, R&B is his least favorite. Mm-hmm. He likes country music more than R&B. Because he says there's no instruments in it. And it's easy. R&B is all groove. It doesn't matter. There's no instruments. It's all. I have. It's not all less of a crush on him now. It's He's like, never seen a live R&B show. It's I'm all assuming instruments. Not, yeah. Because I have. I've, is he thinking hip hop and rap? No. R&B. Those are all instruments being played. I've, I believe me, we've had this discussion. Really? He cannot stand R and B because I have like a sex playlist that is oh. mostly R and B songs, and he's makes like, it I don't maybe like it makes him feel inadequate. I don't think so. Oh. It's all it's about the main... these guys are all sexy. Yeah, but you can't tell that when you're listening to them. It's the main yeah, genre that has people of color, isn't it? Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> he likes metal. There's plenty of black people in metal. But uh, are there? No. Yes. How can I don't that, know. You don't, I don't know. know. About what does he so. know? <laughs> no, listen, they're they're not overflowing with black people. Right. Heavy metal is is got it. They got plenty of Diversity. people of color. Yeah, yeah. I did say R and B had all colored people. I said it's the most. If you take R and B and hip hop, that's why they combine them usually. Hip hop and R and B because it's mainly people of color. Right. It's mostly black artists doing R and B. Sure. But yeah. No, he's not a big fan. Really, I love yeah. it, boy. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me hmm. too. All right. Well, then, so uh, did you have to amend your sex playlist? No, I've only played it once. One time. And then he was like, I, you know, he's laying there like a wet noodle. I'm not just super into this. Uh I mean, the sex was still good, but I was like. But it was despite the music. Yes. Huh. I like it. Uh, there's I piss specifically picked songs that get me going. Yep. And then he was He like, had to plow his way through some Mary right. J. And I asked him, I was like, you know, is this you like these sexy songs, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I love this one. And he's like, yeah, this isn't. This doesn't move my This needle. isn't doing anything for me. Right. What's this guy's name? Robert Kelly? I don't know if this is going to do anything for me. Marvin Gaye. Gaye? No, that's no, not. No, this what? is straight. Neo? Huh? I love Neo. I got to take a break. I'll have those Monsters tickets for you. Like Cleveland Hockey? Sure you do. I'll have uh, four tickets to see them play the Charlotte Checkers coming up at the Romo Fijo. So we'll do that in a bit. 35192 on a text for anything else. And we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our.